How has Linux changed my life? This is a fascinating question as we dive into Linux not just being a computer build, but so many various elements of my life has changed since my Fourier into this interesting operating system. And today we want to talk about what that could mean, not only for me, but for you as well. Thanks for checking out this video. And today we want to talk a little bit about the journey, the odyssey of Linux. We're going to look at how my life has changed. We're going to talk about new methods of computing and having greater confidence in all areas of life. And also how I'm utilizing new software systems rather than just being a normie, buying something, opening up and using it however the company wants me to use it. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this today. So first we're going to talk about how I first got into Linux. About 15 years ago, I'm doing work with a, a company and I'm doing uh, sales presentations where I'm, I'm meeting with a professor on a video conference and taking notes in a Salesforce instance. So I ran two separate computers for this. My Salesforce computer was a cheap compact that those cheap compacts, they had a design flaw where the hard drive was literally screwed directly into the, the main body of the computer. So anytime you slid the computer slightly, it would put every bit of shock into that hard drive and it completely killed hard drives. So after the second hard drive died, I'm like, can I run Windows on an external drive? Now, nowadays you can, then you could not. But I did find this thing called Ubuntu. And I said, oh, okay. So I download that, install it, and oh, this is neat. Now I didn't think like, wow, this is absolutely amazing. But I was like, hey, it's functional. It allows me to finish my job. Let's do it. All right. And so I played around with that and as I played around with that, I kind of forgot about it after I transitioned out of that job, did some other things. But then what happened is Windows 10 starts to come out. Now, I was a normie. I'm using Windows uh, 7 at the time. I buy Adobe software. I'm buying Microsoft Office and things like that. And I see Windows 10 announcement drop and there's this EULA and there's this constantly connected system and it's constantly sending data back to the company. I said, I want nothing to do with any of that. So I remember that little Ubuntu thing and I downloaded the thing again and I reinstalled it again and I started playing around with it. So my workflow, I had a my Windows 7 computer for my main work. I had this Ubuntu system that was running that was playing with software and then I had a Mac for compatibility testing and a few of my clients, I did things over there on the Mac. So I got a chance to play around with all the different major computer systems. And then I end up getting an extra laptop and installing Linux Mint on it as I found that Mint had a way superior workflow to how I personally choose to do my work. So I went ahead and did that. And then as I'm doing that, what happened is I, um, I went in and I said, well, we're going to go ahead and play around with this. I get a laptop, put Linux Mint on it. So I'm trying to figure out how to get all my software running on that computer to move my workflow over. And yeah, I was a complete Linux noob. I'm trying to figure out how to run Photoshop on Linux Mint. I'm trying to figure out how to run Microsoft Office on it. I didn't know LibreOffice was a thing. I didn't know OnlyOffice was a thing, stuff like that. I think I've heard about OpenOffice long ago, but didn't really pay a lot of attention to it. Well, then I start figuring out that LibreOffice does things a lot better for my workflow, especially being said it being a an author as well. I can format my books in LibreOffice, which is something the docx file format does not allow for. So I can get all of that book production done without having to use external software. I can go ahead and get everything done and LibreOffice exports the file exactly as it needs to go directly to the printers to print a book. And so it allowed me to get in there and allowed me to figure out how to use different software. This built up some confidence. We're going to talk about confidence a little bit more later, but it allowed me to build up confidence as I experimented with different operating systems and learned how to install them and stuff like that. And then finally, what I ended up doing is I took the plunge daily by wiping out the old Windows 8 system in that other computer, which was almost never used, and installed uh, I think I installed, I can't remember exactly which Linux distribution got installed directly into that computer. So I no longer had an external drive. 
And then eventually we went with a straight Linux system. Right now, I don't run any Windows or Mac, have not run any of those in a long time. I do have a Windows and Mac laptop up there if I happen to need them for some reason, but <laughs> usually I pull them out once a year to charge them to make sure they still boot, and that's about it. So from here, we're going to talk about my new methods of computing. So first, I learned about Raspberry Pis. And Raspberry Pis, of course, are single board systems that you can use for a lot of different things. And so as I look at my, my Raspberry Pi options, what I end up doing is I built, I play around with a lot of these things. I can build a retro Pi for gaming systems. I run uh, an open media vault, which allows me to run better networking and uh, a few other applications as well. Of course, one of my main work computers is also a, uh, a Raspberry Pi as well. And so that really allowed me and opened up to new options, how individual uh, computers would work and just giving me better, better options and better ways to work. Of course, then I also learned about PFSense. So PFSense was a system that allowed me to build a custom router. I had no idea you could even do this. Like I'm thinking, oh, you need a new router, go to Best Buy, pick up a commercial route or whatever else. I didn't know an option was out there. So a subscriber sent me the the um, uh, Fitlet PC and I was able to build PFSense off of this. There's a few different options that you have for building a router out of Linux. This is the one that the, was the predominant one when I built my system. So that's why I went with PFSense, which honestly for me works great. And I've been using this same system even here in my van. This is what runs the heart of my networking in my van is this PFSense built off of a custom computer. Now PFSense is BSD, not Linux, but very close in many aspects. And then of course, I learned about custom ROMs. I didn't know this was a thing. I was a normie. I, you go to Verizon, you buy your phone, you turn it on, and and you uh, curse at all the stupid stuff it does you don't want it to do. I didn't know that lineage was a thing. I didn't know that this was an option. And so I learned how to do this, and I figured out how to run these systems it allowed me to have a lot more freedom in my life. And that's what I encourage people to play around with Linux to see if it can do for you what it did for me. So those are new methods of computing. But now I wanna transition over and talk about a greater confidence in life. As I looked at how it was running computers, of course, the old way of doing things was just go to the store, buy the computer, turn it on, and you use it however they wanted. but Linux gave me a better confidence in testing new things. We talked briefly about lineage. Of course, what I did and what I recommend you do if you can, buy a used phone that you don't care if it breaks. It's going to be cheaper. It might be last year's model just to figure out the feel of getting lineage on it. I bought my first Nexus phone off a guy on Craigslist for 150 bucks. I used that. I installed lineage. Once I was confident with it as far as could I make it work like a basic tablet stuff? Then I went ahead and put the SIM card in it and I used it in full production. I have never turned back since. de googleified Lineage phone works for me perfectly. I absolutely love the layout of it. And so it gave me new... Uh, new confidence in testing new ROMs. Gave me new confidence in better networking. I could, instead of just having shared folders on computers that would nebulously find each other on the network somehow, some way, some why, what I ended up doing is building out a system that allowed me to come in and say, hey, let's experiment with a full central networking hub through the open media vault. Let's build a media server and things like that. Now, the next thing it allowed me to do with conference is break out a new software. You know, I'm stuck using Adobe. I'm trying to get Adobe products to work on Linux Mint. <laughs> that was an exercise in futility and stupidity. Okay, absolutely. Hands down, I was a moron for this. You know, I replaced Dreamweaver with Bluefish. I replaced Photoshop with GIMP. I replaced Inkscape with, um, uh, is it? Oh, I replaced Illustrator with Inkscape. Like, wait, what? I got something wrong there. So... There are good, viable solutions, and all these software packages are really good. 
they are all really good. They're not exactly the same. So if you're like a Photoshop expert and you first jump up GIMP, you may get a little bit lost or confused or don't like the system as much. I understand that. But the reality is GIMP does nearly everything Photoshop can do. It does some things better. It does some things worse. But for an independent contractor, is it capable of working? Yes. Now, if you're required to use it for your job, you're going to be stuck on a Windows or a Mac. I understand that. And while we joke a lot about the channel about, oh, it's you know, switching to Linux and you got to dump Windows and all this kind of stuff, while we joke about that a lot, the reality is I don't care what systems you're using as long as you understand the benefits and the risks of those systems. Even Linux has its downsides and we have to understand that. But the confidence I gained from using Linux was absolutely incredible. But what this actually serendipitously allowed me to do is break free of the coming new software model, which wasn't the thing when I first started, but nearly every software package is now moving towards a subscription as a service. And so, or software as a service, a subscription model effectively. And so now you'd have to pay in perpetuity for getting the Adobe software, <laughs> I'm switching to GIMP. <laughs> I know how to do it. And so I have solved a lot of those issues and a lot of those problems with doing that. And that really is the important principle here is just making sure that, uh, making sure that, that I could get in there and use those because I gained a greater confidence. And then of course it gave me confidence to fail at some things. Uh, one of my most, uh, um, uh, more popular videos is my one on void in which I said, it's worth the hype. And frankly, a lot of it, I couldn't get working. This to me is a failure. Some people really love void and some people are like, Oh, you're just an idiot. You're just blah, 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 blah. No, I have a certain workflow. I'm not a geek that wants to spend all my time playing around trying to get an obscure system working when I have 700 other valuable options that don't give me problems, okay? And so the reality is, is Void as bad as I said in this video? Probably not. But it's certainly not as good as a Linux Mint or a Debian or even an Ubuntu if you just need a functioning system. But playing with Linux gave me the confidence of accepting some failures. I'm not a void user. I'm not likely to be a void user. There's no reason. There's too many other distributions that I don't have to fight with because I'm not here looking for the challenge of getting over a fight. I have a boatload of work to do. I have books to write. I have websites to design and I need to make sure I have a system that's going to install, it's going to work, and it's not going to leave me high and dry. And that the reality is where I am at with the systems that I'm currently using. And so as I look at this, we move over and talk about new software and systems. So what types of things have I, of course, learned how to do? Obviously, retro gaming. I mentioned this earlier on a Raspberry Pi. I am a kind of traditionalist kind of guy. I'm not the guy that goes out and plays around with new things. I'm not the guy that wants to necessarily go out and watch the latest movie. I'm not the guy that wants to play the latest game. My idea on a Saturday night, I've finished a bunch of work. I sit down for a couple hours and play the old video games I grew up on. And that's the extent of the video gaming I like to do. And I figured out how to do that on Linux, utilizing the systems. Consequently, uh, also, I have learned how to, uh, with Open Media Vault, create a media server. And allowing a media server to be created, what I was able to do is it's now much more convenient to watch movies. And so since I now build out my movie server, I have bought a hundred times more movies than I bought up till the time with Linux, because it used to be like, I have one TV with a DVD player. I got to hunt through this thing. And then I have this pile of DVDs and they're kind of in the way. And then I got to put the thing in there and all this. And it's very inconvenient. Well, I'm not into streaming and I'm not interested in paying for a service forever for the companies to fight around in the background and get rid of my favorite movies like Netflix and et cetera often do. And I'm not interested in paying every single month for the privilege of watching a movie that I could buy a DVD for one time and own that. And no one's going to take that away. Well, switching to Linux gave me the ability to watch movies more conveniently on more devices. And what this meant is I buy a lot more movies. 
I buy them so I can watch them on my overall system. And so because of that, now oftentimes I buy them at thrift shops used, but I own the physical copies of the discs. Many times if there's a movie that I know I like and I want to see it, I will buy it new. And so I have actually increased my movie budget because of that. So the next, of course, is networking. Uh, as I talked also on Open Media Vault is the thing that controls my central network. Now this one system gives me an ability to share files between folders, have my pictures in one spot. I have the, the videos in one spot. I have my music in one spot. One centralized location allowing me a central networking hub on my network so that I can get in here and actually do a lot of fun things that I wouldn't have previously done. And then finally, I have the banking systems isolating computers for security. So I have a Peppermint banking system that I use to do all my banking, which is encrypted and isolated separate from any other computer. So if there is some, if I happen to get some malware on a computer, it can't impact or see any of my banking. There is nothing that gets done on any computer except that one encrypted computer, which is on a little drive that can be plopped into any system I have around here. And this gave me the ability to do that. I have a similar computer for backups. So I have uh, one computer which stays offline, which has the backup of all of my important life files is all in one place. Again, can't be accessed, can't be breached, can't be captured by malware all isolated, all off the internet, that allowed me to do it. And also we have, whether tails or cubes, we have systems in place now that if I see something that, okay, I think this might be a scam, but it might be legitimate, I can open up certain resources in security hardened computers just to make sure that there's no major issue with those. And so these are all factors that, uh, that I've learned how to do. It allowed me to build a much greater confidence in myself and in the computing world. And I already was decent at computers. I wasn't like as much knowledgeable as I am now, but I was certainly not the lowest of the barrel. I was average above average in computer knowledge. I was the guy people would ask computer advice for, but since switching to Linux, so much better, so much better. So switching to Linux has been an amazing experience for me. And that's why I want to talk and talk about it so enthusiastically, because I would love it if you guys would get a chance to play around with that as well, to see, is it as impactful for you as it has been for me? So hopefully it has been, and uh, hopefully also this video has been informative. So please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. If you like this content, you want to see more, whether it's tutorials or philosophical things like this, or some of the latest news, either in Linux or in the, the business and the privacy and the security world. We cover those on Friday nights. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Hit that like button and leave us a comment down below. That will help boost the channel and the algorithm. With that, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.